if you are holding the ball. People ask, how long can I hold it before it's a lift? If the ball comes to a visible stop and you can determine that the person has caught it, a slow, long trampoline is pretty different than a catch or a stop. So yeah, again, this is one of those judgment calls. Did the person catch it? And there's no amount of time. We can't give you, you know, uh, 0.73 seconds. That's just not reasonable. So you just have to say, did the ball come to a stop? Did the person control it and catch it? Or did they just have a long, flowy touch? And you can set from your chest. You can set from your ribs. But it would be unreasonable to say that when the contact started above your head, then you brought the ball all the way down under your ribs. Then you pushed it up. You're in contact with that ball for a really long time. So that is probably, well, almost definitely going to be a lift. But if I start my hands like at my nipples, you know, and I just go up forward and I set, just because I caught it below my chin doesn't mean that that's a lift. That's not a lift because I'm still going forward. I'm not in control of the ball. It's when I grab the ball from a certain distance, then I pull it down, and then I push it up. And some people, yes, their hands are in contact with the ball for a long time, but are their elbows dropping? That's kind of one of the keys to knowing if it's a catch or like a soft rebound. Um, are my elbows actually dropping in space? Uh, or is it just kind of my forearms that drop? Because the forearms can drop a little bit. They are trying on the world tour to make setting a little bit quicker, a little bit less catchy, but, but there's still some, some room for rebound. So there's no amount of time before you can call a lift. It's just, uh, you just can't hold it and catch it. And different referees might see that in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, the first thing that came to mind, and we happened to be talking about this video last uh, on, the, on the drive up to San Francisco, but um, we have a video on YouTube called The Seven Deadly Sins of Hand Setting. And a lot of those sins, <laughs> we'll say, uh, have to do with your ability to break your wrists. And so if you're holding your hands up and they're straight above your head, kind of like you're performing a, a field goal, right? Like someone made a field goal and then you push your hands forward so that they're facing away from your face, then people have this ability to bend their wrist and let their hands fall, like their thumbs almost fall below the wrist point. If you do not have the ability to do that, then that's when the catch starts to happen a little bit more. Uh, there's one specific portion in our Seven Deadly Sins of Hand Setting video called Stone Hands. And I think that this style of setting is where most people who get called on lifts get called for lifting. Because Stone Hands, what that means is that there's not a break in the wrist. You're literally catching that ball, your hands don't move at all, and then you're just using an elbow bend and extension to make that set. Uh, a lot of people are really good at doing this without making spin, and because a lot of people call doubles based on spin, or they call lifts based on spin, it doesn't get called a lot. So uh, I think that that's a really good video for you guys to reference, especially if you have a lot of questions on what's a good handset, what's a bad handset, what are some things that you're probably doing wrong.